Hi guys, good morning. Welcome back to my shop. It's Emma again. Had taken a look at some boiler bits. I've got this tube which was a hand-me-down from another project. It's the right size and the right length. It was part of a, another Kenneth Wells engine. And I've got some copper which is 1.2 millimeters, about 50 thou copper sheet there. Heaps of that, so we can cut a bit of that out. I've been measuring this up and this tube is imperial measurements. We have a look, it's inch and five eight. Outside diameter. That's one point six two five inches, and inside diameter is inch and a half, pretty well exactly. So that's 1.5 inches. Our piece of copper sheet is 50 thou thick, pretty much exactly. Yeah. So we need a, a former to make the inside make it a piece of tube that'll fit or a piece of sheet with a with a a fold on it that'll fit beautifully inside this tube needs to be inch and a half less two times fifty thou is one point four inches. So that's pretty straightforward. I found a bit of steel over here. which has got plenty of length in it and I've faced it off and we're going to re machine it down to So I gave up on that piece of steel. I don't know what it is. It's hard as a cat's head to use an Australian colloquialism. Um, it's work hard and it's the first cut if you get a little bit hot. And there's absolutely no way I can turn that, let alone part it off. So I don't know what it is, I don't know where it come from. It says D2146 or SD1834. Someone might know what that is. I've got no way of really looking it up. But it's pretty hard stuff and it looks like it's probably chrome bar or something. And it's hard on the outside. So we've given up on that. I found a bit of SF1012 or 1220 or something that's fairly free machining. And we've finished the button. That's actually fairly warm, but that's the, the dye for that. It needs the pip filing off, and we'll start the flange them. Set the scroll saw up on the bench and turn the speed down pretty low, and cut these ends out. It's not really the best way to do it. 
and I don't really know of a better way. I've got a lot of copper to cut coming up on the boiler for Princess Marina so I'm gonna have to have a bit of a think about a better way to do this maybe a set of bench shears or something like that but the scroll saws pretty scary thing to use on thin copper sheet and it's done now years ago I cut some boiler end plates using a similar technique and it really wasn't much fun I remember that now. So a totally harrowing 20 minutes later I've cut these out pretty rough. It's not really the best way and I can sort of remember why when I did it before that it wasn't such a, a terrific idea. So. These are a bit bigger than the line all round. They're going to need setting up in the vise and a good coarse file just to clean them up. And that'll be next. So about another five minutes work. And I've got two circle, two discs. you notice I haven't centre punched the centre to mark them. Because I reckon that would probably provide a weak point in the boiler. It's not good practice. So I've got two discs. They've got to be flanged over a former. And fitted inside the boiler on each end and then silver soldered. So So we've got these cut out and marked for the former. It's got a line there if we line that up nicely. Yeah, like that. And just hold him together. Give these a tap around. This copper's a bit hard. Just move it a bit at a time. So we've got a good start on the flange. Next job is to anneal the copper. It's something we're going to need to do a few times during this process. So to anneal copper, the opposite of steel. We need to get him red hot and dunk him in water. And that should be a lot softer so we'll start again just make sure he lines up nicely in there and you find that bends about 20 times easier when the copper's soft That 
want to stretch too much at once or you'll end up with a buckle in it and that's a bit harder to get out just a bit at a time you go right round and anneal him again Take him off the former again. Just keep the flame moving and get him nice and warm through. I'd say you nearly make this boiler with a map gas torch without too many problems. Time to anneal him again. Water's starting to get a bit warm here. It might be time for some fresh stuff. We've got a couple more yet to go on this end. It's nice and seated there. Look, that's very close to going in there. And probably if you gave it a tap in that way, it'd go in, but we don't want to distort it. So we're going to tap it a bit more. Time to anneal it again. Look, we can see it closing up there nicely, no more gap. So after all that, we've got two nice little boiler ends. They've going to be a nice tap fit in there that one and that one in both ends so there's still one more job to do on these one of them needs a hole in here just drilled through from the inside for the heart for the pipe and that lines up with the on the top of the boiler and that's the steam pipe to the engine on this end I think so that's the next job and when we've done that we're going to put them in some pickle for a while
So, so just some citric acid again, which is this here from the supermarket, and some fresh water, and let them pickle for a bit. And next video will be soldering them up. So, thanks for watching, guys, and thanks for all your comments and kind thoughts last time. I really appreciate the friends that I've made on YouTube. And more soon.